This is Financially Fit Radio with Corey Sickles from Safe Harbor Retirement Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Corey provides his clients and prospects with the information they need regarding Social Security, retirement income planning, wealth management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is Financially Fit Radio with Corey Sickles. Welcome to another episode of Financially Fit Radio. I'm Corey Sickles, representing the team at Safe Harbor Retirement Group and Wealth Advisors. If you'd like more information about the insights on today's show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can give us a call at 614 614- Seven six zero zero six seven zero, or visit us on the web at safeharboroh.com. And while you're exploring our website, be sure to navigate to the radio page. There you can watch, cat, there you can catch up on previous shows and even subscribe to our program through popular podcast platforms like Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, or Spotify. For engaging visual content on various financial topics, feel free to drop by our YouTube page as well. Just search for Safe Harbor Retirement Group. We're here to address any inquiries you might have or to arrange either an in-person or virtual meeting. And remember, all of our meetings are complimentary and carry no obligation. Your financial well-being is our priority, so let us know how we can assist you the best. Well, today we're going to talk about estate planning mistakes. I think it's a a great topic to talk about. Um, I, I think a lot of people don't even know what it re- truly what an estate plan is. We're going to kind of dive into that as well. But before we get into that topic, let me introduce to you my co-host this week and every week, and that's Tony Shore. Tony, how are you today? I am doing great, Corey. Glad to be here. This is fun. I love doing the show with you each week. You know that. And I've had a great week. I've been enjoying the weather, getting outside, and just <clears> to, <throat> trying to hang on to the last of summer here. It's going fast, isn't it? It is. It is going really fast. So, yeah, yeah, I had fun. I got to see uh, my daughter, who we sent off to college uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, came back home for the weekend. She's a little homesick already. <laughs> you know, it's you a little laundry there with you for you, too, probably. <laughs> yep. She brought some laundry, and she's uh, she's funny because this is the first time she's ever not lived at home, you know, her whole life. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know how that goes. But yeah, she's doing good. Otherwise, I'm great. What did you do? Uh, you've been busy, haven't you? I have been busy. I was down in Nashville, uh, Tennessee for a advisors meeting. Oh, so yeah. it's always good to, to educate as well as learn, you know, from other advisors down there. Um, yeah, that was a good event. I haven't been downtown Nashville for, you know, quite a while. You know, I lived down, I lived in Nashville for about 18 years. So it's changed drastically, oh. you know, since I've been really been back. I, I've been back. I just haven't been downtown. Yeah, downtown and is not even the same. It, it is. It is not even the same. It has grown exponentially. They keep building these huge high rise hotels and it, it fills up and it fills up. And uh, I think uh, I read that it's now the number one a bachelorette party destination over Vegas. It surpassed Vegas. Well, there was definitely some bachelorette parties down there on oh, yeah. Friday night when I was down there. So. On 2nd and Broadway. That's where it all happens down yep. there, isn't it? It is. 2nd yeah. and Broadway. Yep. That's exactly where it is. But there's some great music so. there. And those uh, they still have the old honky-tonk bars, and they still have oh, a yeah. lot of live music. And, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a fun place to visit. I'll tell you that. I lived there as well for six years. So, you and I have yeah. both had our our Nashville experiences. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, as we kind of dive in today, you know, one of the most crucial things that you really can do, uh, not only for you but your family and your beneficiaries, is it, and it, it's really crucial. And that's set up your estate plan. And really, what we're talking about is just to make sure that you have everything set up with beneficiaries, how you want it divided. But more importantly, to make sure you have, you know, whether you have a will or whether you have a trust, um, you also want to make sure you have all your financial, your health care, power of attorneys, and your living will as, as well. And, uh, you know, we're, what I really kind of want to talk about today, Tony, is, you know, when we start talking about that estate plan, you know, um, what, are the, what, are, what are a lot of the mistakes? You know, and the first one I'm going to kind of talk about, and that's procrastination. 
Everybody thinks they have till tomorrow in order to get this thing done. Uh, the, the problem is, of course, is you really don't know uh, the day that you're going to pass. And it could be unexpected. And, uh, you know, I hear it all the time. Well, I haven't done one or I'll get to it. Um, you know, things happen. And if you don't have this stuff in order, I mean, you're just going to put your family through. It could be a nightmare in order in order to, uh, you know, go through all good, really to go through all your assets. I mean, Prince, for example, didn't have anything done and he's still going through it. We can, you know, we can name a lot of different other people too, Tony, whether it's Elvis Presley or whether it's, you know, some, you know, it's a, it's a, I think even Aretha Franklin's still going through some of this stuff. Yeah. Aretha Franklin was, had that issue as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that just don't put that in order. Um, it, it can cause disputes you know, among family members. And, uh, so, it, you know, it's, it's always important, you know, I always say if you don't have a financial plan, you need to have one tomorrow. And really, if you don't have an estate plan today, you need to have one tomorrow as well. Yep. Um, and, and here's the one thing, it, you know, at least get it on paper. You can always change it, but you need to have something in order with what, how you want things to be able to, uh, be distributed. Well, you don't want to leave your family in a, in a horrible situation, which is what you're doing. You're just really causing a uh, distress. And I've seen the lack of a clear estate plan break families apart after, you know, uh, the the person passes, uh, the parent passes, um, the siblings, uh, it, you know, it wasn't clear cut or they didn't have an estate plan. And that's just so troublesome. You don't want to leave your spouse or your loved ones in that situation. No. And, you know, when you fail to create a will or a trust, it can result in your assets being distributed according to state laws. Yeah, you don't want to leave it up to the state. You're leaving it up, right? Yeah. Which might not only, you know, might not even align with how you want your things distributed. So a will or tor- a will or trust is going to allow you to control who receives what and how your assets are distributed. Now, I don't, I don't want to really kind of get in today to do I need a will or do I need a trust? I mean, that's something that we can actually handle when someone comes in and meets with us and that's, you know, we go over estate planning there in the very first meeting to find out what you have. And if you need to actually set one up, um, the, the main thing is to have it. Everyone's situation is different, which is why I really don't want to get into in, in today's episode really of, you know, what's the big difference between a will and a trust and the benefits of each. Sure. And, and that's important. It's important to understand these things, but that's why you need to work with a financial advisor Someone like yourself, Corey, uh, listeners, you have to have somebody in your corner who's looking at the big picture, who can work alongside you and estate planning attorneys to get this in order. And I just think that it's so important. And like you said, Corey, there are so many costly mistakes that people make. And that, the biggest one is putting it off. Like you say, it's the biggest right. one is not having an estate plan. That's correct. And then all that forces, all that means is you're going to go through the probate state of Ohio is it's about an average of about 5% of the overall assets that go through the probate court. So, um, you can eliminate a lot of that if you have everything set up the correct way. And, you know, that's one of the things that, that we try to make sure that our clients have all that set up, um, in, you know, in order to avoid probate and make sure that their assets, you know, go the most, you want, to, you want them to go the most efficient possible way, you know, to your beneficiaries. Right. You want so, your beneficiaries to get the biggest amount and you don't want it all eaten up in uh, court fees, legal fees, um, taxes. So there are a lot, there's a lot to consider here, isn't there? There is. And then here's the other part is once you get this established, Tony, then you make, you need to make sure that you're updating your estate plan. A lot of people don't do that. Um, you know, life circumstances have, you know, changed over time, such as marriages, divorces, births, deaths, um, you know, any changes in your financial situation, for example. But, you know, failing to upstate, you know, update your estate plan is going to reflect these changes and can result in unattended beneficiaries receiving money. Mm. I've seen it. I've seen it before when someone's come into my office, Tony, and uh, they're divorced and remarried, but the original spouse is still on the beneficiary forms. Wow. So, so I mean, wow, things change. You need to be able to make sure that, and that's why one of the things that we normally do during our annual reviews, 
when we meet with clients, we're going to kind of go over and say, are the beneficiaries still the same? Right. Yeah. That, I don't know what's huge. happened. And, uh, you know, sometimes you don't know what's happened, you know, in life or maybe you have fallen out with your brother and sister or siblings or you're going through a divorce or who knows what. But it's, it, but it's always something to be able to make sure that you're always updating that estate plan when you have a life changing event. Yeah. And you hear those horror stories of like, you know, the person who was married young, um, way too young, maybe right out of high school. And it was a mistake. Uh, but they had a full-time job and they had the wife listed as the main beneficiary, but then it doesn't work out a year or two later, they get divorced. Um, the person gets remarried, has a spouse and kids and, is with them for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and then passes. And all the money from all those working years in his 401ks, IRAs, uh, it still never changed the beneficiary and passed away. All that money, instead of going to his kids and his wife that he's loved for years, went to his ex-spouse. And that is just a, that's a horror story. You don't want something like that to happen. No, No, you do not. And, you know, the other part you have to do too, Tony, is you, you also want to make sure that you're also choosing the right executor or trustee of your state as well, ah, right? Yep, that's a big I one. I think that's, you know, that that's, you know, there's a lot of responsibility, right? They're going to carry out all your wishes. So you want to select someone who's trustworthy, capable, and willing to fulfill these responsibilities as well. Depending on, on, on who you're actually giving that money to, if you're giving, you know, if it's a trust, that trust could last for years, depending on how you have it set up. Years after your death, if you're still going to pay out over time as well. So you want to make sure that you choose the right one. And I, I can tell you this, I think it's always good to sit down with your family and tell them that, hey, John's going to be the trustee and uh, here's how everything's going to be divided. Right. There are so many times where I think a lot of people think the trustee is doing their own thing and it causes a lot of internal conflict because that someone thought they should get more money and they're going to blame it on the actual executor or the trustee. In reality, it's just they're just executing what mom and dad wanted. Right. 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 That's all they were. That's all they really wanted to be able to do. But uh, so make sure you choose the right one. And I always I highly recommend that you also bring the family in to make sure you know what. So everyone knows what the wishes are. And this is who's going to be carrying that out for us. Yep. And I think that's, I saw that happen with my parents' family. I know that, you know, if you have four kids, like my grandpa did, he lived to 101 and had a lot of farmland and he passed, but he had four kids and he put, um, two of the four in charge of the estate and nothing was ever discussed with the other two. And, exactly. And that is a huge mistake. Even if he picked the best two to be the executors of the will, um, it doesn't work that way. There's always going to be hard feelings because decisions were made without their involvement and they have no idea what's coming and it blindsides them. So uh, if you care about your loved ones and and you don't want to, you want to keep family harmony, this is more about estate planning is about family harmony, isn't it? It is. Yeah. You don't, I mean, in your, like you were just mentioned a second ago, Tony, really what we're talking about is your heirs, or your beneficiaries yeah. are going to feel like they they have some type of unequal treatment. Right. So you want to make everyone comfortable, make sure that they know exactly what that's going to be. So their feelings don't get hurt. Yeah. Yep. Communication I mean, that's really is what, the key. Yeah. And it's good to communicate before. And, you know, I, I've, of course, you know, being in, the position I am, I've seen a lot of blended families too, sure. right? Where you might have multiple trust, um, you know, going to two different sides of the family where, you know, moms goes the, you know, mom and dads go to their, you know, their families. Um, so everyone needs to be in the loop of that. Everyone wants to just feel like they're treated equal. Yeah. And in some cases too, I think it's always good to know or let, let, let them know beforehand, um, unless you're not really talking to them, but you know, I've seen it some where they're actually leaving someone out too. Oh, so, yeah. uh, um, and that's a bad feeling to be able to, you know, feel, but for whatever reason, you know, I do see that as well. And a lot of it has to do with 
you haven't spoke to them, you know, maybe haven't spoke to one of their children in years, or it could be even a stepchild, but you need to be able to make sure that you're also putting that into the will or trust. So they know that, um, you're not leaving them anything as well. Right. Exactly. Now, before we move on, let's take a moment to let our listeners know, Corey, how they can get a hold of you because if they want to get a plan in place and make sure that they're checking off all the boxes of what they need, uh, whether it's a, a will, beneficiary designations, there's a lot of boxes to check when it comes to this enhanced planning and family harmony. So how can they get a hold of you and set up that no charge, no obligation consultation? Yeah, Tony, thanks. For our listeners out there, just give us a call at 614-760-0670. Or you can, again, always visit us on the web at safeharboroh.com. You know, we're here to help and guide you. If you don't have a financial plan, we can put one in place for you. You know, we can also, you know, provide that second opinion on your financial plan. And also, when we start talking about estate planning, if you don't have one, we can put one in place. Or, um, you know, the other side of that is if you need to have it modified or reviewed, you know, we also have an attorney that you can actually have that run by as well. So again, just give us a call at 614-760-0670. Or again, you can always visit us online at safeharboroh.com. All right. Sounds great. And we'll keep rolling here, Corey. It's been a great show so far. And listeners, we're talking about estate planning mistakes. And, Ed, Corey, you've given us a lot to think about already. Where do you want to head next with this? Well, you know, you can't talk about retirement, Tony, and you can't talk about really estate planning unless you talk about taxes. Uh, of course. I knew that was coming. Right? Yep. Yep. Estate taxes can have a huge impact on the value oh. of your estate. So, you know, failing to plan um, for tax efficient strategies can result in larger tax liabilities for your heirs. Of course, one of the you know most common things that I see are IRAs or 401ks or thrift savings or 403bs. Um, and, you know, it's great that you've saved them, you know, that amount of money. But at the end of the day anymore, um, you know, that money has to be cashed out over a 10 year period. So, you know, if you have a million dollars and you're going to give that to one person, then that's a hundred thousand dollars a year. They're going to actually have to cash out. Now spouses have exemptions on that. Um, if you are leaving it to a spouse, but if you're leaving it to anyone that, that's not a spouse, they now have 10 years in order to cash that out. That was a slight change a couple of years ago, you know, and, uh, it's going to, obviously they did that to collect taxes quicker, but it, but it's, but it's something where, you really need to understand on how much is going to be taxed, how much could be actually like a Roth IRA, and how much is going to be what we call a step-up basis as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors to that. If you inherit uh, an IRA, a traditional IRA, or a 401k, uh, do you pay a full uh, income tax on what you receive? Are there estate taxes? Um, and how much will that be? And that's very expensive. I know from what my dad is going through with his grand, his father's estate, my grandfather's estate, the estate taxes, it's a mess. And if you don't have a, a good team on your side, a financial advisor and estate planning attorney uh, ahead of time, which my grandfather had uh, someone, he didn't have a financial advisor. He had an estate. He had a he had an attorney who did not specialize in you know, uh, rural, uh, farm estate planning and didn't know what he was doing. And it was a mess. And, uh, you, it's so expensive. If you inherit, especially a small business or land, um, it can be very costly. And if it's something you want to keep in the family, it's sad because if you don't have it properly planned out with a trust, you, your kids could end up having to sell it just to pay the taxes. That's exactly right. Um, yeah, and, you know, of course, one of the most common ways to help, you know, pay for some of this tax liability could be Roth IRAs, and it could be also life insurance in order to help to pay for, you know, a lot of these taxes that might be coming out unexpectedly. Sure. You know, so it's something that you definitely need to, I think that everyone needs to sit down with. And that's one of the things we, you know, of course, we work with, uh, with our clients. We have a CPA that can also look at some of this stuff. 
You know, we have an attorney that a lot of our clients can work with. But at the end of the day, I also have to be knowledgeable enough to be able to say, you know what, we could have an issue here. So let's do some tax planning, uh, you know, for for your heirs or for your beneficiaries as well. well. You mentioned something and we don't want to bury that. You made a good point. Maybe part of your plan, and it depends on your situation, is to take out a, a life insurance policy so your beneficiaries can cover the taxes that way using that. And that could alleviate a problem. So, and may, I wish my grandfather had maybe done that. So uh, I think yep. that that's where your value really shines and you can save people a lot of headache and hassle, Corey. Yep, I, it's exactly right. And that kind of even leads us into the next thing, Tony. And that is, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, everyone's worked hard. Hopefully you saved saved enough. And you're going to want it to go to work, to your heirs. You know, you're not going to want it to go to the government, or you're not even going to go to a third party like assisted living or long-term care facilities as well. So I think you know, not considering long-term care could have a huge impact on your overall estate. You know, if if you do happen to require that at some point in your life, it's going to have to come out of your assets, right? So uh, you know, planning for potential long-term care cost. And having the appropriate life insurance or long-term care insurance or part of your financial strategy in place, it's important because now really what we're talking about is having that money go to your heirs or have it going to some other third party. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. I, I, I hadn't thought of that. That's really important. You don't want to have uh, your money going elsewhere. And that's, that's a good point. There are many places that money can end up going that you don't want it to go. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. So, Long-term you know, care. I mean, that's huge. It's just so expensive. Uh, my, yeah, my mother-in-law's in that situation where she has a lot of money saved up, but, you know, she's having memory issues in the place she's at now. If you go into the memory care unit, it's 12 grand a month. It's a very nice facility, but that's outrageous. Yep, it is. And it, and it can even, you know, you're looking in a, for, you know, in this, you know, in Ohio, the Columbus area, probably around five thousand dollars a month for assisted living, and then around ten to twelve thousand dollars right now for memory care. Yeah. So it can it can be very costly. You know, one of the other things that I that I hear that I see a lot of people do is as they kind of bring documents into us too, Tony, is there's a lot of people that like what we what I could say it's like do it yourself estate planning, right? They're going to kind of go out online, grab something because they don't want to end up paying some attorney something in order to be able to put their estate documents in place. And that can really be a mistake if you don't know what you're doing, um, right? You're not going to know all the little nuances that are involved with estate planning to make sure that you avoid probate. Um, so so one of the things I would always say is, again, ours are pretty economical, the attorneys we you know that you can work with out of here. And, you know, it's just something that it, it's great that you can maybe you put it in place, but it might not be the right forms. It might not be the right documents. Not really be you don't you truly don't understand what you actually just put into place. Good point. Well, we're out of time for today's show, Corey. Let our listeners know one more time how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, Tony, listeners out there, just give us a call at 614-760-0670. You can always visit us online at safeharboroh.com. We're here to help and guide you to make sure that you have the retirement that you want. We're, we can put together a financial plan, and we can also sit down and talk to you about um, your estate plan as well to make sure you have you know, all your I's dotted, all your T's crossed, because the one thing you want to make sure of, it's a smooth transition of something unexpectedly does happen to you. We're here to help. Again, our phone number is 614-760-0670, or visit us on the web at safeharboroh.com. All right. Thank you so much, Corey. And listeners, that does it for today's episode of Financially Fit Radio. Join us next week for another episode of Financially Fit Radio. Thank you for listening to Financially Fit Radio. Don't pay too much for taxes or retire without a sound income plan. For more information, contact Corey Sickles at Safe Harbor Retirement Group. 
Call 614-760-0670 or visit their website at financiallyfitoh.com. All matters discussed during the show are for informational purposes only. Each individual situation may vary and the opinions expressed here may not apply to everyone. Materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources and no representations can be made as to its accuracy. All ideas and information should be discussed in detail with one of our qualified representatives prior to implementation. We are not affiliated with or endorsed by the Social Security Administration, the Federal Medicare Program, or any other government agency. Calling this number will direct you to a licensed sales agent.